Good afternoon. It's a really great, great pleasure also for me to be here. I've been in Israel several times, but uh, it's excellent to enter the society also from the science perspective. And I have enjoyed very much, especially being able to learn about uh, biodiversity research in Israel, but also about the research infrastructure by the local hosts, and that has been really, really, really nice. And uh, it's also been excellent that the uh, chief scientist, Sinaya Netanyahu, has been able to be with us all day and all evening throughout these days. I, I think that's a very good sign from the ministry. Uh, I just learned that the Minister of the Environment is going to be present here soon and give his talk. And so don't get surprised, I'm going to have a break in my 40 minutes talk at some point when he arrives, but we can continue then after that. And like all the others, I want to say thanks to Tamar. Uh, I just invented a new title for her. I think she is really the key species of biodiversity research in Israel. But uh, let's move into my talk. So I'm going to approach from a very different angle than all the others here. I'm going to talk about the processes that actually lead to the research that we have heard and the research that we need in the future. So in 1987, the World Commission of uh, Environment and Development uh, really postulated that sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. And what do we have today? The world is not sustainable. This is a picture from an uh, uh, article by Rockström et al. Uh, by the Stockholm uh, Resilience Center. And they uh, 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 planned the planetary systems into nine different ones. And the middle part, the green area, is the safe operating space for these nine different uh, planetary systems. And the red ones show what is the state, the current position uh, estimated for the uh, nine uh, different ones today. And we can see that there are three of them that are not within the boundaries that are accepted. They have exceeded the boundaries already. There's the climate change, there is the nitrogen cycle, and more than anyone, anything else is the biodiversity loss. And as we all know, biodiversity is the building block for ecosystem services that are crucial for human well-being. So we should really be worried. But biodiversity problems are often wicked problems. The problem is not one problem, but a cluster of many problems, and it has the ability to transform. When we are solving one problem, it actually leads to another problem. And characteristics of wicked problems are uncertainty and the fact that the, there is a close interlinkage of social, technological, political, economic and ecological questions in them. So why research is important in ecological sustainability? For two reasons. Firstly, I think that humanity has the responsibility and has the kind of ability for curiosity. Science is needed to broaden our understanding of the world and the universe. But because we are messing up with the globe, there is also the problem-solving responsibility or reason for research. Science is needed to find solutions to socio-ecological problems. And science has actually built the society that we have today. All these hundreds and thousands of science findings that have been done along 
tens and hundreds of years, have led to technological and social innovations and developed a really nice football, which is our globe. So, science is also responsible for finding solutions to these problems. But because we are not dealing with a European football, but with a Thai football, which is complex and interwoven with the problems, we have to solve them in a different way. And this means that we need to integrate thinking from different sciences, from different theories, and this is the reason why we are looking for interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity. So socio-ecological research. Biodiversity is an ecological concept, but its major challenges are actually socio-political. In socio-ecological systems, societal and ecological processes are interlinked. So, Research on socio-ecological systems will actually provide us better understanding of the processes behind biodiversity loss and the potentials for alternative futures. But does research actually make a difference in managing sustainability? I suppose this kind of pattern is quite familiar to all of you. If you are researchers, you are thinking, biodiversity is decreasing and I can show what is needed to reverse this. So why is not my research taken seriously in decision making? But if you are policy makers, you say, Biodiversity is decreasing, but no one gives me knowledge which could help me to decide what policy and management measures should be applied. And then we have the local person somewhere in his village saying national policies do not make sense in our region. Many of us researchers are not so familiar with policy cycle which means how policies actually work. First, society is identifying emerging, finding emerging issues. This can be done either by the policymakers, but it can be done by the researchers or actually any group in the society or movement in the society. And then it's decided that we need a strategy to manage the problem. This again leads to policy, and that is implemented in, in the society, and we carry out money, uh, monitoring to see how the implementation works, and we evaluate how efficient it is, and then on basis of that, we might change the strategy to be more efficient. The green circle here means uh, that or shows that actually research and development has a lot to give to almost all parts of this circle and we should take that seriously. This means that the academic research and the development which often is doing something practical with the managers have to come closer to each other. Decisions are actually science-based in the society. I give you an example from Finland. Siberian flying squirrel is a strictly protected air species in the EC Habitat Directive. That is an outcome from research that has been carried out which has showed that the species is highly endangered. And therefore, the deterioration or destruction of breeding sites or nesting places is prohibited. Well, all the Siberian flying squirrels of Europe are actually based in Finland. There are 100,000 of females. But because of this habitat directive, 47 bridges have been built in one road to 
to uh, safeguard the flying squirrel. Many uh, building ha buildings, uh, constructions have been stopped and uh, policemen have received lots of complaints about uh, trees that have been fallen and, and these have led to different kind of acts. So we can say that actually science has an impact. But when we are thinking about the long-term sustainability and the broader scale of biodiversity, this is not enough or maybe not the right approach. There is need for other approaches. We need a more integrated approaches of the different uh, sectors. We need a longer term perspective. Uh, we need a, a higher scale. We can't deal with species. We have to go to a, a higher scale of, of ecosystem level. And we have to link uh, analysis on natural resource use and uh, nature protection. And we have to identify the benefits to human well-being. But most of all, we need to speed up the link between science and decision-making. But we research, researchers, we don't do anything only because someone tells us that we need to do something. And because of that, I would like to take up some points. What motivates the researchers to mobilize themselves? What drives the researchers? Interesting questions. Well, that's pretty obvious, so I'm not going to dwell upon that, that so much. But there are also other things. There are the possibilities for intellectual debates, networks, collaboration. There are the research infrastructures and institution. And there is, of course, the money that drives. Now I'm going to move on to these. And firstly, I will start talking about collaboration and networks. In Europe, there is a network called Altenet. Altenet is a, a long-term biodiversity ecosystem and awareness research network. It was initiated as an uh, FP7 program, a, a network of excellence of uh, uh, the Commission. And at that time, it had uh, some 25 partners. Almost all of them decided after the uh, funding ended that they will actually fund the network themselves because they saw it so useful. Some left, but most stayed, and actually four partners have joined this spring, actually, two new partners. So it's at the moment 26. What are its main activities? It's interdisciplinary research, it's research infrastructure, it's communication and outreach to the society, it is very much policy interface, and it is training and summer school that takes place every summer in France and is very uh, much uh, um, uh, appreciated by PhD students in Europe. So what does it offer as integration and collaboration to researchers? First of all, it gives the researchers a possibility to uh, identify research needs for policy development, think tanks, workshops and seminars. It's also facilitating the exchange of interest for tenders of collaboration and the joint proposals for writing, Propo yeah, for proposal writing, and also policy briefs. Uh, last year we made one on ecosystem services. It's also uh, uh, providing integration and exchange of methods for national deep studies, and uh, it has carried out Europe-wide multi-site experiments, and it's also running LTR and LTSER activities. Now I think I will make a break and, and give the uh, 
floor to the minister. Okay, let's move back. And that was very nice to hear the minister's supportive words to the biodiversity uh, management in Israel. It was, I think, very uh, uh, supportive uh, for the future steps here. Uh, I have to take you back to this slide because we had this cut just to remind uh, us uh, where my story went. So I wanted to say that researchers need certain issues that are driving them to, uh, towards those um, questions that are wanted in the society. Uh, and, uh, I already mentioned the networks and collaboration and now I will move on to research infrastructures and institutions before I say something about the funding. So research infrastructures, I would like to take up one uh, research infrastructure uh, in Europe and uh, present also here in Israel that actually is supporting the new way of uh, knowledge production for biodiversity and sustainability or uh, ecological sustainability. And that's the long-term socio-ecological research platforms, the LTSERs, which are part of the LTR Europe concept. Uh, on the right-hand side, you, you see the map uh, with the yellow dots or areas, the, that's the European platforms that we have. So uh, many of you might be uh, familiar with LTR sites, which are long-term research sites. But uh, the socio-ecological platforms, they are fairly large, and even though they are spatially defined areas, they are not so... Uh, clearly defined because the administrative and ecological uh, scales and boundaries uh, do not match. And they are not focusing only on ecological issues but on sustainability as a whole. And the objectives of these platforms is interdisciplinarity, long-term field research and data sharing. This is a fairly new uh, tool or, or kind of way of collaborating in research. And there has actually been a, a study being carried out which came out last week uh, by Isabel, Isabel Maus and, and others on how these LTSER platforms actually uh, support research. They analyzed three different platforms in their early stages during their first few years with interviews and, and, and analyzed documents. How do, these, uh, uh, how do the expectations and science vision enact in practice in these platforms where researchers from different uh, disciplines meet? And firstly, their result was that only minor tangible effects were gained. However, when they looked at their interviews in more detail, they actually realized that the processes turned out to be uh, as important as the products. So they became learning processes or something that we are not very good at yet doing collaboration with other disciplines. So the potential actually in these LTSCRs is to help researchers to learn to collaborate with colleagues from other disciplines. Issues that especially came up in the study were data sharing, identifying what is a site, and uh, uh, forming the research questions jointly. Then uh, next I will move on to talking about institutions 
And uh, actually, Tamar asked me to tell something about the institution from where I come from. That's the Finnish Environment Institute. Finland, uh, when I was a child, in Finland we had about 4.7 million inhabitants, and I always remember that in Israel it was 3 million. But nowadays Finland has about uh, 5.4, and I know you have something between 7 and 8 million, if I got it right. Finland is a bit bigger country, but still, if we think about the number of inhabitants, it's, it's maybe a closer collab uh, comparison between Israel and Finland and between Israel and, and the US. So the institute it's, is a governmental research and development institute, which aims to bring knowledge and services for sustainable development. It was formed in 95, and today it has a staff of 650 people, and its yearly budget is 50 million euros. Of this money, today 55% is coming from the government, and the other come from external sources. And we have an agreement with the Ministry of the Environment and a smaller agreement with the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, uh, what kind of services we support for them, but basically we have our own agendas. We have strong international networks and we, our target group is not only the Ministry of the Environment, but the government as a whole, because we see that environmental issues have to enter into the uh, decision-making process through all different sectors, not only the environmental sector. We also uh, work with managers, universities, companies and NGOs. As everywhere, the public funding is decreasing all the time. And at the same time, the uh, requirements from the society are growing. And therefore, we have really had to work hard to get the thing working right. And I think I would claim that we have succeeded because actually our staff has grown and not de uh, decreased. So what, we have, uh, what kind of structure do we have? We all researchers and, and, and experts have a home base. We have different centers. Uh, I'm managing the Environmental Policy Center, which has 50 uh, researchers of mainly social science. We have nine different disciplines, only in Environmental Policy Center. And then we have the other centers on nature, environment, water management, marine issues, consumption and production. But we need to collaborate because, as I talked earlier, the issues are complex and, and interdisciplinary. And therefore, we are working in themes uh, aiming to find new knowledge for built environment and land use, consumption, production and sustainable use of natural resources, knowledge for climate policy, Baltic Sea water issues and ecosystem services, and biodiversity. And this is both research and expert services, so it's both R&D. But we know that to be able to support the society with good knowledge, we need high quality research and for this we have uh, developed five different focused research programs on exactly the same areas as we have the themes. Now I move to the last point of what is motivating researchers, which is the funding, the money. We know that unfortunately that is the one that keeps us going because we have to have to have something with what we pay our salaries uh, or get our salaries out of and also pay for the equipment and, and the research itself. And I would say that for the decision makers, the thematic research funding programs is a very good instrument to direct researchers towards the wanted direction. Here are research programs by the Finnish Academy, which have been running since 1990 in Finland. There has been some 10 of them till now. And as the themes are problem-oriented and 
tackle these different societal or socio-ecological questions, the researchers along the years, the last 20 years, have moved from multidisciplinarity to interdisciplinarity and to transdisciplinarity. And therefore, I very much encourage research funders also in this country to use thematic research to carry out, uh, to, to uh, focus the researchers to work uh, on those questions they find in, important and uh, the decision, -making, uh, decision makers find important and that they get those, the, the kind of knowledge from the research community that they are needing. We can also look at the issue from the other angle, what drives research agendas? I would say that different kind of think tanks are really important, but the think tanks have to link not only researchers with each other to come up there. You bring lots of researchers together and then you say, what are the priorities in biodiversity research? That's not enough, I would say. We need the link between the practitioners. We need the link with the research funders so that they actually hear from you why certain issues uh, are important to carry out the research and so that the researchers hear from the managers what actually are the major knowledge gaps. I give an example of one case where I actually met first time Tamar. The Rio plus 20 is almost uh, in, in, in the next four weeks in front of us. And before this Rio meeting in, in Rio, there are 400 different international preparatory workshops. And ICSU, which is the uh, international community for uh, science unions, have been coordinating the preparation of recommendations for science and technology community. And they have been running these kind of think tanks or workshops around the world. The last one of them was held in uh, Helsinki, uh, and that one uh, brought together researchers, practitioners, and members of civil society from Europe and North America. Very general key questions were discussed there, what we are all familiar with, that the planet has boundaries, and that the education and capacity building is, is crucial but also that we need the economic system to change in the society and that existing and new knowledge has to somehow uh, be able to gathered and, and taken better into the use. And therefore, the three different topics that will be discussed in uh, Rio are very highly interlinked. They are the green economy, institutions and governance, and new emerging issues. But let's come back to my topic or my talk, which is more what the researchers should be doing. What's the agenda for research? So we came up uh, five different issues that researchers could and should be contributing to the society in sustainable development. That is to construct global knowledge systems, to set goals for sustainability together with other actors of the society, and to bring knowledge and solutions to sustainable development, to help the practical application of the knowledge uh, solutions, and to monitor and to assess and to evaluate what has happened. And therefore, we need new institutions like we need national panels, we need science advisors, and we need international panels. And we have to strengthen those that we already have today. I will finalize my talk by uh, talking a little bit about this shared knowledge production. 
And this one deals with urban green areas, because I think this is so important issue for Israel and for developing countries and for all countries in the world. The green areas are the lungs of the city. And they are also the filters of the water. The appreciation of biodiversity does not really come by looking at videos or TVs. We need to get the appreciation by touching and feeling that the biodiversity is in our backyards. Recent research has so showed that green areas contribute very strongly to mental health. For example, children with uh, some uh, nervous disturbances are dealt with, mental, uh, with uh, green areas and uh, also for our uh, well, everyday well-being, they are really important. And today Ilka Hanski told us about the physical health and the connection to green areas. We have been carrying out a, a kind of a project together with regional and local managers of urban planning, where we have developed the criteria for sustainability and we have developed together with them the indicators for sustainability. And the sustainability is built of ecosystem services, which is actually the way to see biodiversity in cities. In cities, you don't talk about biodiversity, you talk about ecosystem services and the local people are the ones who are actually uh, saying uh, what kind of quality for green infrastructure they need. So here science is supporting the planners. <clears throat> and here are just a couple of examples of the indicators. The indicators are maps. Here we have a city of Lahti, which is maybe a size of Besheba. And we can see the uh, connectiveness of the green areas, which is the dark green in the picture. And the light green is the buffer zone. So we can use the map when we plan where a new, uh, new building blocks are built or where a shopping center should be placed. This one again shows where the recreational areas are. They are the dark green areas, and the, li the light green area shows that from those areas you have less than 300 meters to the recreational area. We have similar maps about uh, transport, about uh, services, and so forth. But now I'm going to finish my talk by just uh, raising three issues that I would like to see uh, in Israeli biodiversity research taken into account. They are international networks, inter- and transdisciplinarity, and urban ecology and green infrastructure. And I finish with this picture showing that ecosystem services are global. These are two young Israelis who are enjoying the provisioning services in Finnish forests. Thank you very much.